Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Foods and Inns Q1 FY24 conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Milan Dalal, the Managing Director at Foods and Inns Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Greetings to my fellow shareholders, analysts, beneficiaries, and prospective shareholders. Our last call was on May 18, 2023. As the Managing Director, I would like to start with the announcement of another quarter of progressive growth ending June 30th, 2023, and would like to once again dedicate the same to my entire team, led by Mr. Muloy Saha, our CEO, Mr. Anand Krishnan, our CFO, and many more in the team at various levels, at the corporate office, and at our production facilities. And needless to mention, we are ably guided by our Chairman, Sri Bhupendra Dalal. While most of you are aware of the business verticals of foods and inns, I will quickly take you through this quarter's achievements. Food processing. Primarily, we process mangoes. Our company produced additional varieties this year, and very happy to say we achieved a record production. We primarily cater to the juice manufacturers in India and in international markets. Logically, the concern and our anticipation is on tomatoes, the new gold. Let me clarify that while we have witnessed tremendous growth and that we continue to get encouraging inquiries for domestic and international companies, the production of tomato processing will only start in the month of October. We expect the prices to stabilize by then as also most of our contracts would be on cost plus basis. Happy to announce that we shall be ramping up our production facility of tomatoes in this financial year and not only cater to juice manufacturers but multiple FMCGs for many other products. We will continue to achieve incremental volumes. Next is our spade drying unit with the new capacity going on stream. We have broad based our product mix and the audit process with the brands are currently on. The new technology is giving us cost effective edge in the market. As far as the foods, uh, frozen foods division is concerned, our new facility at Wankal in Gujarat has been commissioned recently, which will be beneficial to process fruits and vegetables at an optimum cost during peak season, which will give us an edge in this competitive market. Kusum spices, we have experienced strict control on pesticide residue in spices in the Gulf export market, which impacted our sales in Q1 uh, financial year 23-24. We have started mitigating this challenge through various initiatives like sourcing from pesticide compliant certified farmers, also, we are targeting multiple newer avenues in the export and domestic market to ensure growth in this segment. As far as our Tetra Recart facility at Wankar, Gujarat, it has been operationalized by end of March 2023. And for the current season, production under our brand name Madhu or Mango Amras was completed and we have launched the same in the Gujarat market. Further launches going ahead would be under the ready-to-eat segment with six SKUs ranging from soups to curries by October 2023 under the brand name Green Top.
having covered all the verticals, I have two other important aspects to be informed. One is that we had announced the fundraise for an opportunity that we were evaluating. However, the same has been deferred for now. Last but not the least, while I have given some insight on the journey of the company for the last 45 years and that of my co-promoter, since the last call, Mrs. Pallavi Dupesia has resigned from the board of directors and also sent in a letter of de-promoterization of which the compliance process as per the regulation is being done. As for our estimate, the process will further take 90 to 100 days until we get the final approval. As already mentioned, the sale of shares by my co-promoter will have no impact on the working of the company and that I will lead the matters of strengthening on all fronts required for the success of the company. With this, I would ask my team to, in case they want to add anything further, before we could start off with the uh, Q&A session. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Anand Krishnan, the CFO at Foods and Limited. Thank you for joining us, and I extend a very warm welcome to all the participants of our Q1 SI24 Investor Conference call. I have here with me our Managing Director, Mr. Milan Dalal, and our CEO, Mr. Munal Sahar. Each quarter is a chapter, a stepping stone towards our collective vision of success, and let me assure you the pages that we are about to turn will promise of intrigue, growth, and transformation. We hope that the strategic decision that we are taking as a team is shaping not just the future of our company, but the very landscape of our industry. Financial numbers alone can't capture the full essence of what we are doing as a team. It's the stories behind those numbers that truly define our clients and challenges. Stories of tireless teams working around the clock, of audacious ideas that dare to challenge the status quo, and of the resilient spirit that carried us through unforeseen storms. As we move ahead, we promise to take calculated risks, and as we celebrate our victories, we are also laying the groundwork for what comes next. We received our first claim under the PLI scheme for an amount of 9.71 crores for FI22, and we will be submitting our claims for FI23 soon. I hope all of you have the opportunity to go through our public results and the initial notes shared on the stock exchanges. We are extremely thrilled to post strong set of numbers once again. Domestic demand was slightly weak in Q1 of SI24 due to unseasonal rains in the norm. But we see demand regaining ground as we speak and have crushed more than 40% mango pulse than what we did in the same season last year. Tomato sales demand is showing promising signs and we are planning to put up a concentrate plan to cater to the demand. Our second project JV beyond mango is slightly delayed due to a few machineries which have come in late and we expect to launch it before the end of September 2023. As I come to the end of my opening remarks, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your unwavering support, unyielding trust and your invaluable presence on this call. Now I request the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you all may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use their handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question comes from the line of Sriram R, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. I have uh, two questions. Uh, one is if you can give the market size of uh, mango processing in the country and your current market share, that would be helpful. 
and also if you can give a split between uh, you know the mango and the potato and what would that split be let's say five years from now value for you okay uh we couldn't give you clearly uh, on the entire set of questions but if i get your questions right partially uh, current market share is what you are actually ask so it's slightly a tricky question for us to answer but having said that it's basically product wise so i mean coca cola has a brand called as maza so which we almost supply say 50% of uh, around uh, somewhere between 40 to 50% of your requirement as such and the other balance is actually uh, serviced by a few other clients uh, for pepsi we service around the uh, 20% of your requirement as such as of today so it's a slightly tricky question to say as to what the market share is but i can assure you that we are one of the uh, largest along with a few other competitors in the market as such Second, with respect to your mango and non-mango split question, uh, 82% of our revenues actually came from uh, mango pulping in FY23. Uh, the other parts all put together, I think, was at around uh, 85 or 88%. So that's the mango and non-mango split. Ideally, as a business, we want to reduce the dependency on mango and want to reduce the percentage share to the total sales to somewhere around 50-60%. But then, having said that, we see a lot of tailwind for the mango pulping because of which the share is actually increasing. Uh, so, if you go to see our numbers uh, four years before, maybe 92% of our revenue used to come from mango. Now we have diversified to a lot of other parts and a few other businesses, which has helped us get the share down. And so, on the margin side, uh, can you just uh, elaborate, like which one has a higher margin? Um, so the products actually have similar margins, uh, but Mango being the dominant uh, share of our pulping business, we strategically take calls on a few other uh, pulping that we actually do to do on a marginal cost basis as such. It's all what we can actually offer as a basket to the customers. Okay, thank you. I'll I'll join. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Ashutosh Garud from Ambit Wealth PMS. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Hey, hi. So, uh, just wanted some clarification because in your presentation we mentioned you mentioned that the tonnage is down by 21 percent, but yet uh, we have uh, seen a growth on the revenue. So, if you can explain the pricing and volume uh, spread as far as the current revenue for the quarter is concerned and uh, also you in the in the opening commentary you mentioned about some 40% growth in your uh, volume so just wanted to understand what how how could we link this uh, so uh, were you talking about the current month or what exactly that 40% growth was this okay hi this is molloy shah Uh, so, Mr. Ashutosh, uh, the first question you are having that we have mentioned that we have a reduction in the pulp tonnage for the Q1. Is correct? There is a decrease in the volume. Uh, one of the major reason is that northern part of India uh, having uh, unseasonal rain, which uh, affected the overall beverage industry uh, in India this year for the first three months. Uh, however, we are able to get a 30% growth in the revenue the there are two reason one is that being a agricultural communities our price depends on the raw material of the particular season in 2002 mango season 2022 mango season price was standard in the moderate price was there and that product sold in q1 of 2023 that means april to june 2022 whatever product is sold it is processed and packed in mango season of 2022 whereas in 2023 sorry i miss that in 2021 whatever we have produced that price was little moderate and that product sold in April to June 2023. Whereas in 2023 mango season, we have seen a crop failure, especially in the southern variety, and the price, raw material price has almost doubled. So 
So we, since we are the cost plus model, so our final product price also was double. So in current year Q1, whatever product we have sold, that has been processed in last year, and hence the realization is higher. So this is the one of the reason. Second important is that we have some product mix changes in the sense earlier we didn't have much exposure on tomato paste. But since two years we are starting tomato paste, we are really concentrating on the tomato processing. And this year in our Q1, substantial quantity also from the tomato. And tomato is having a uh, high realizable value compared to other products like we sell chili, garlic, ginger, which are all low realizable value, whereas tomato is a very high realizable value. These are the two major reasons where you got a revenue growth of 30% in spite of tonnage reduction by 21%. Okay, uh, thanks for the explanation, sir. Thank and you. And second is about, uh, asked yeah. about the 40% uh, what you talk. 40% is basically the higher production. Mango season is just over. Uh, it's from mid of April till 1st of August. During this year, we have produced 40% higher than last year. Now, this product likely to dispatch in next 12 to 15 months period where we can see some good volume and which will be helping for the higher revenue. Hope it's yeah, clarified. That is, that, is, that, is, that is very helpful. So, uh, just wanted a sense that, uh, so, so mango as such being a perishable uh, commodity, so how does this happen? Basically, you, you procure mango during the uh, season and then the production keeps happening because I, I presume the produced finished goods has a much more uh, shelf life. Uh, would that be a fair assumption and how much would that be if you can throw some light on the cycle from raw material to finished goods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We buy raw material, as you rightly said, we buy raw mangoes, that is green mango, and then we took around five to seven days for ripening process. There's a ripening process is taking place. And within seven days, we have to process mangoes and packed in an aseptically filled technological packaging or can technology. There are two technologies available for the mango, which is having 24-month shelf life. So again, I'm highlighting raw mango, which we bought, it has to process within seven days after ripen and then filled in a uh, aseptically or can filled, which is having a 24-month shelf life. So, so and, and and basically the the raw mango the production of pulp would happen only during this three four months is what yes. I understand. Right? Absolutely correct. Oh. Okay. Sir, if I have more questions, I'll come back on the Thank you, Mr. Rivas. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Amit Gori from Investor. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my question is related to the announcement, I guess this was a uh, last year announcement wherein uh, we were about to take a, a factory on lease from Andhra Pradesh government. So can you please uh, give us any uh, details on that? What's the current status on sure. Hi, this is Anand here. Uh, so last year we were in dialogue with the Andhra Pradesh government to secure a factory on lease. But uh, the, subsequently, the government itself actually uh, did not go through with the proposal as such. So uh, as of now, it's completely in abeyance. Okay, okay. And uh, also, uh, what are your B2C uh, further plans? As we currently know the, about uh, uh, in your earlier announcement uh, regarding certain products, but uh, if you can just draw a little light on one or two years prospective. Uh, so, I mean, we have uh, focused our entire strategy into three brands that we want to actually grow. One is the Kusum brand that we actually acquired in uh, October of 2019. Second is the Green Top brand, wherein we are going to be selling our uh, frozen pulp and frozen, fru frozen fruits and vegetables, as, as well as uh, the Tetra Recart based products, ready to eat, ready to cook products that we are going to be launching soon. So we have uh, decided on six SKUs under the uh, RTE segment, as, uh, ready to cook segment as such as of now. And uh, the third is basically Madhu brand. 
So Madhu is something that we have already launched this year under Tetra Recalls packaging wherein uh, the mango pulp is already uh, in the shelves in the Gujarat market. Uh, the next six months we will actually see a few others, uh, say tomato pulp and a few other things actually coming up there. So this is what we actually have in the B2C market. I will just hand over the line to our CEO in case we have anything else to add. Uh, we see a good uh, response in our frozen category. We have launched uh, around seven or eight months uh, ago, and uh, uh, I think uh, the market space is quite encouraging. We are getting a lot of repeat orders, and we are now started focusing on this segment. We are uh, mainly we are doing in uh, Mumbai or New Mumbai region, but over a period of time we may extend that in the other states too. But good news that we are getting a good response on our frozen category. Okay, great, great. Sir, if I can ask one last question, what is the uh, status of the preference allotment, sir? Uh, and I mean, uh, we have uh, read the announcement that the, the certain uh, allotments have not come in, and what's the plan going forward? So I think, uh, not to confuse yourself, there was a, a fresh uh, announcement which we discussed at our board, to uh, you know, come in with a capital raise, that's been deferred. But the previous issue of warrants, of which 30% right. uh, was uh, received in December of 2022, and uh, the investors have the option available for a period of 18 months to subscribe. And uh, the, they are in the process. Some have started uh, partially converting them into equity and balance within a period of totally 18 months of the issue, which would be somewhere around June of 2024, uh, we would expect them to subscribe. Right. So the fresh announcement is for another another warrant, you mean to say? Which is being deployed. So uh, nothing more is happening other than the previous warrant issue. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank That's you. all for my thing. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Mini from Market Code Research Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening. So my question is, uh, can you specify what factors related to a higher profit before tax and which of them are one-off cases and which are more permanent in nature? And how is the PLI subsidy accounted in the books and being used? So PBT is a factor of our higher realization uh, and the operating leverage that we actually got in the uh, current quarter, that's number one. Uh, having said that, uh, our PBT will not be affected because most of our uh, prices are passed through in nature and uh, pricing is generally on a gross margin per kg is what we try and target. Uh, so internally we have a uh, margin set for each and every product that we sell. So PBT is going to be a function of the increased volume as well as the gross margin per kg that we are going to be realizing in the current quarter or the current year as such. Uh, there have been no one-off cases that we have actually had. And uh, with respect to your last question on PLI, uh, we received our uh, 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 sanction letter on the 7th of July 2023, and it's going to be accounted in Q2 of, uh, of our results as such. Okay, thanks. One last question before I come back. Uh, can you talk more about the Tetra Recard capacity which has been operationalized and the utilization percentage? And have you got any external orders? Okay, Tetra Recard is a good question. Thanks for this question. Yeah, yeah it's a very, very, um, we are really, as a company, we're excited on this product. Uh, we have started commercial run in the month of March. We have covered the mango season. We packed a uh, good volume of mangoes, and recently we launched in Ahmedabad. Not in exactly in Ahmedabad, Baroda, Chaurashtra, and Ahmedabad, few region we have launched uh, about five days before as a product called Amras. And uh, so far, uh, the response is quite good. People are liking the product. Uh, we are quite bullish on this. The next category, what we are looking at, TE, ready to eat. Uh, the packaging um, development is almost done. We are expecting the packaging in the month of September. So next launch will be, I think, sometime around mid-October or November will be the next. So total uh, SKUs uh, will be launching around, one is already done, another six. 
so that is our own brand apart from that we are also in active dialogue with few uh, big brands uh, to have a co-packing on their behalf so the trial and the sampling process is on uh, this take little time being a b2b so we believe that in the entire process will take another 4 5 months and packaging development also takes a couple of months so uh, i believe that we will have uh, some good uh, sales or revenue in the q4 that is january to march of 2024 and uh, these are the uh, period when you have to do all the trial error sampling and uh, from next financial year i believe that we will have a, uh, a bigger chunk of share in this category but the good part is that uh, product compared with the retort retort is a technology which is already available in uh, india quite a long time and the new technology in tetra recard this product quality taste far far better than the normal retort technology so that's why we feel that it's a good market and response is also quite good i would just like to add a couple of points here the advantages of tetra recart is also that it's uh, rectangular in shape because of which it's 20 percent or 25 percent more efficient to store whether it is in retail shelves or in transport uh, containers as such secondly 50 or 58 percent of its uh, total materials which are actually used to pack tetra recart is recyclable so both these are major advantages that we would actually have going forward as such and uh, not to mention the ease of opening a tetra recart as compared to ease of opening a tin can got it uh, but can you talk about the percentage utilization of the capacity which you have done by using for your own brands uh, as of now, it's not the right time for us to give you the capacity utilization of the same because as the uh, CEO said, uh, we are doing a lot of uh, uh, tech marketing as in a lot of R&D with respect to what the uh, outsourced guys want and what we can actually produce. So maybe the next year onwards is the best time to actually give you an uh, idea of what the capacity utilization can be. Thanks. Last question. In the previous concourse, you talked about uh, uh, spectrum production, right? Which right. bring higher realization. Can you talk more about in terms of what actually has been realized in terms of factory production? Uh, so in my opening remark, I mentioned that the uh, Pectin uh, project is slightly delayed because of a few machineries which are not yet coming from our machine supplier. And uh, we are expecting to start production of Pectin by September. Having said that, this raw material season, we have already captured uh, the raw material which is actually required for uh, manufacturing of Pectin. And we think we should be able to manufacture that uh, come September, October this year. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes on the line of Alicia Mahavala from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. So in the previous call, we were targeting for 25-30% volume growth for the current year. Uh, Q1 has not gone as per plan. Are we still sticking to uh, hoping for a 20% plus volume growth for this year? Uh, okay, hi, Malo here. Yes, you are correct. Uh, the previous call we had anticipated around 25% volume growth, but oh, so uh, over everything uh, since we spoke, there is a lot of uh, weather changes, weather pattern changes. So the weather industry. Uh, not going as expected, but uh, uh, when you are speaking to the brands, uh, since they have expanded their capacity, we are quite hopeful that in next nine months' time or eight months' time, we will be able to recover substantially. As of today, it is very difficult for us to say uh, what will be our volume growth, but we are, we are quite confident that we will be able to uh, uh, make up uh, in next eight months' period. Alisha, I would like to add something here, wherein uh, the contracts which are signed with our larger brands basically are always honoured. It's a question of when the call-up actually happens. So whatever they are committed for will be definitely taken up. It's just a matter of which quarter it will be taken up. That's how it is. Okay, understood. Sure. And um, how about the prices of mangoes this year versus last year? Because last year there was a crop failure like you mentioned. So how has the season been this year? in terms of uh, cultivation harvest or pricing? Mango pricing this year, uh, I mean, if you 
know the variety the mango one of the major variety which is very premium variety called alfonso alfonso this year in ratnagiri region that is konkan region crop failed so that puts lot of pressure in the other market like kujiat is a big alfonso market as well as bangalore also some alfonso available so hence overall price on raw material has gone up by almost 18% to 20% on the alfonso whereas other varieties uh, like uh, which is basically covered the volume tota puri is the one of the major variety uh, which uh, all the industry is uh, processing that has uh, bumper crop you can say and price is almost half now compared to last year Uh, so these are the mix so in the alfonso uh, products we have a higher regulation so in tota puri we have a lower regulation compared to last year but we are our cost structure is cost plus model so hence uh, there is no risk for us whether price go up or price go down uh, margin protected understood and for our in our mango pulp business what would be the mix of tota puri and uh, alfonso mango be okay uh, in the volume wise uh, tota puri contribute more than 60% and uh, whereas if you see the value alfonso is a high value item it contribute more than 30% of the value whereas tota puri the volume is 60% the value comes around 40% understood and uh, what is our current capacity on the pulp side and is there any capacity expansion that we've done or we plan to do uh, we in a year we generally process around 300000 metric tons of fruits and vegetables uh, this is including our own in house production as well as contract manufacturing uh, yes uh, there are some capacity expansion exercises going on especially on the tomato processing so uh, uh, even if we have the you know basically we are trying to ex- uh, expand our in house capacity and less dependency on the contract manufacturing but uh, the way the brands are showing growth in next 3 years i think we need to continue the contract manufacturing we just can't reduce that however there is some in house capacity expansion is going on which will give us around 15000 to 20000 metric ton additional capacity from next year in house this is only tomato processing or overall <coughs> it's about annual it's overall mango plus tomato okay okay, okay. and what are we spending for this uh it will be around it's under uh, final negotiation but it should be within 25 crores Okay, and just quick clarification: the pulp uh, mango plus non-mango is 85 percent of the revenue, and the remaining 15 percent will be the B2C, which is uh, Kusum plus Ketarika plus Madhu and the other brand. Is my understanding correct? No, no, no. Uh, B2B today will be say 95 percent. B2C is 5 percent, maybe less than 5 percent. We have just started B2C, so it will take time. I mean, I think uh, the way beverage industry is going in India, our B two B sale is going in a phenomenal pace. So, to match that pace for the B two C is a real challenge. But yes, our focus is on on B two C too. So we are not uh, seeing what will be the overall percentage in our B two B and B two C, but we are focusing on the absolute terms that how much should be our B two C in next five years. So that is the way we are working on it. So basically, in as a company, we would like to grow in B two B as well as B two C in both. Okay, I'm so great. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Rashmik Oza from Nine Days Equi Research. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. I have three questions. One was on the capex. If you can just you know guide us, what will be the total capex uh, in this fiscal year, next fiscal year, and how is the funding done for that? 
so the total kit tax uh, should be around uh, 40 to 50 or crores, uh, and the kit tax is already funded in the form of uh, equity that we have uh, raised as such. Unless we want to do something else with respect to opportunities that we are evaluating in the market. Okay. And for next fiscal year, what could be the capex uh, for the site 25? So, uh, next fiscal year, we haven't planned on any capex except for the spray drying part of it uh, or the tomato processing part of it that we'll do. Okay, okay. And the 40 50 crore capex, actually, you know, if I can just quantify what could be the contribution in terms of revenue? Coming from this capex? The minimum uh, revenue mix that we are actually looking at uh, is the asset turnover around 3x minimum. So that's our ballpark uh, some rules when we evaluate any project. Okay, okay. And a small clarification this PLI benefit of 9.71 crore, uh, right. this is uh, will come and reflect in the Q2 numbers, right? Correct. Okay. And for this year, what kind of PLI benefits we could? With that we will filing and which will come next fiscal year. In so roughly around 20 or crores. Okay. And we expect that to come uh, up by end of March 2024. Okay, this year it says it will come in, you're saying. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, we are expecting that, but I mean, I cannot commit anything with respect to what uh, we can get from the government, right? Okay, okay. And since, you know, there is a little bit of uh, uh, uncertainty, in the sense Q1 we had a lower tonnage, but revenue was uh, very strong. Uh, any guidance you would like to give for this fiscal year? What kind of revenue gui uh, guidance or growth you're looking in this fiscal year on the revenue side? Uh, so, I'll just let my CEO answer this uh, Again, realization uh, Okay, okay. Uh, so, the mango side, some mango variety relation be higher, some mango variety relation be lower. But volume we are expecting to go around 15 to 20 percent uh, in annualized basis. Okay, okay. So for for Q1 we did uh, at uh, revenue of around 283 uh, crores. For full year, uh, it will be uh, what could be the total revenue for the full year we are looking at, and if you have any guidance. Uh, for us, as my colleague Anand has already communicated, that we are having the confirmed order. Now, it depends how the customer takes every quarter or every month. <clears throat> so, that estimation will be difficult at this stage. But uh, I think as a company, we are in a, in a right pace on the revenue growth. Uh, so, I think uh, after Q2 only, we will be in a better position to tell you how it will be the, our estimated annual volume. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Sriram R, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thanks again for the opportunity. Uh, I just want some clarification on the capacity. You said 300 metric ton per day. 300,000 metric ton annually. 3 lakh metric ton annually. Okay, three lakhs uh, annual. Okay, and what is the split between mango and tomato? Mango is around eighty percent. Non mango is around twenty percent. Okay. And sir, uh, just uh, one thing. Uh, you know, in the last five years, if I take, uh, I mean, your operating cash flow on the aggregate is uh, still negative, and your debt levels are at three fifty crores. Like, I just want to know what is your plan to improve cash flow and deliver the benefit. Uh, so, I mean, uh, even though uh, me telling this that we should be looked upon as an MDFC is not the right way, but that's actually the spirit of the uh, industry as we speak today. Wherein uh, we serve as the bankers for the larger brands, wherein uh, we help during the peak mango season and store inventory for them, and the call off happens at any point of time during the year as such. So, in effect, we are holding money for them and uh, we lend to them, right? So, most of the banks and, I mean, banks and NBFPs have an operating cash flow which is negative. Having said that, what other things that you need to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, take note is basically last year the raw material prices were much on the higher end as compared to what the normal season was. Because of which, our investment into our working capital was also much higher because we hold inventory for them. But as 
we enter into this particular year, we uh, have seen the raw material prices coming down for at least uh, the Kotapuri, which contributes a lot to our uh, volume. And uh, we can actually expect the operating cash flow to be positive this year. And sir, uh, regarding the, the debt level, do we expect the same? The like pre-pre growth? No, as with the increased production, obviously the working capital debt has to go up. Okay, okay. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Over to the next. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Rushil Silarka from Pioneer Wealth. Hello. Uh, congratulations, sir, for the good result. Hello. Thank you, Rushil. Yeah, so my question is that, you know, we have seen an increase in finance cost. Uh, so is it like due to that we had to borrow to, main, like, as our working capital days were higher? Uh, the question is that, as we uh, mentioned, that our overall production for this year is higher, much higher than last year. So is a working capital incentive com business. Basically, you have to produce 80% of your revenue within three months' time. So you need cash for that. So that is the reason why uh, the overall interest cost has increased. But it will, uh, I mean, if you see the annualized basis, it will come down. I mean, percentage will be more, quite moderate. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Neeraj, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I wanted to know regarding the deferred revenue that you have talked, uh, sorry, deferred warrants that you have talked about recently. So that is uh, deferred or that is cancelled? Sorry, I didn't uh, get your question. Deferred was to what? The warrants you said, uh, recently you announced warrants and now it is in uh, back burner now. So we wanted to check, so uh, will you come with another uh, equity raising plan going forward if some uh, opportunity comes or uh, we should not expect any more dilution apart from the ones which are already issued, like the warrants which are issued in December 2022? So ideally, uh, we have no plans as of now, so it's too early for us to comment. We were looking at an opportunity which did not materialize because of which we had to pull up on the, uh, well, the I mean, equity warrants that we were uh, contemplating to put up. But having said that, it depends upon any good opportunity that comes up in the market which will actually add value to all of us. Okay. And you mentioned in last call, sir, that you plan to raise stakes uh, somehow. So any... Color, can you give on that? I didn't understand your question. Can you repeat, please? Sir, in last call, you mentioned that uh, low promote, for the low promoter holding, you are looking at various options. So any uh, concrete plan on that side, sir? Uh, yes, yeah, this is Milan Dalal here. So uh, a plan, definitely, uh, uh, we still have a year to go uh, until, uh, not a year, but until June of next year. So yes, uh, there are uh, some plans, and at an appropriate time, the uh, announcement would be made. Okay, so I just want to check, will it be dilutive or not, those plans? Uh, so as of now, uh, basically, uh, with respect to dilution, it cannot happen because even if one promoter sells, you, the other promoter cannot actually invest into the company at least through a dilutive method or a preferential warrant method. So it is definitely, it could be non-dilutive or whatever. It depends upon the uh, circumstances. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes on the line of Ashutosh Garud from Ambit Wealth PMS. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, having 40, 50 percent in some client and 10 to 15, 20, 20 percent so, uh, in some other clients' market share. So who, who would be your competitor? Jam Irrigation is one of our largest competitors in the listed space. Sorry. Jam Irrigation and 
So in the unlisted space, we have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there was the erstwhile Capricorn, which has been bought over by the, uh, some, uh, some player called as VM Foods. Uh, they have been bought over through NCLT. But uh, apart from them, there are a few others. Uh, one is ABC Fruits in the unlisted space. Second is Gala Fruits, which is there. Third is Exotic. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks. That is very... Uh... Good information. So, on a revenue breakup, just wanted to understand when you say 80 to 85 percent is from Mango Pulp. I mean, there are some business segments which you have mentioned in your press release or presentation. So, this fruit and vegetable pulp would be the one where it you would be having 80 to 85 percent of the revenues coming from. Is that a fair assumption? So, the entire pulping division would have slightly more, say around 85 to 88. But uh, in FY23, if I'm not wrong, uh, we ended up with mango pulp at around 82%. In FY22, the same mango pulp was at 78%. So, uh, I mean, the idea is to actually not degrow that business, but we are seeing a lot of tailwinds in the mango pulping business because of which the, uh, the whole business is growing. Great. We want to diversify. So the rest of the segment, the spray, diet powders, frozen food, that would all contribute to the balance 15 odd percent is what I understand, right? Correct. Right. That's right. Okay, oh, great. And and on the client front, so so basically, you would your entire pulping as, uh, rev, uh, production would be supplied to the FMCG guys. Would that be a fair assumption? Yes, the branded guys. Okay, okay. And and and, and is there any unorganized sector uh, from your competition in this particular segment? Would there be a large share of unorganized players? Uh, operating into this, or is this fairly organized amongst four to six players? Uh, majorly organized, uh, but yes, unorganized also there. Who process and then players are there. I think, yeah, I do not have the exact data, but from my understanding, I can say you, uh, in organized, unorganized, small 20 plus percentage is unorganized, 80 percent is organized sector. Okay. And and uh, are you? What was this market share which you mentioned as far as Coca Cola being 40, 50 percent? What was let's say this market share four years back, three years back? Okay, four, three years back, uh, we maybe around 20 percent. Half. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That is helpful. And and capacity. If I got your, uh, if I understood correctly, you are having a 300,000 metric ton, three lakh metric tons annually, right? Spread between mango and non mango, non -mango 80 to 20 percent, right? Uh, exactly on that, uh, because told that revenue basis on the 80 20, but the okay. volume basis, uh, I don't think that will be the correct figure because some of the volume as a role is a value, some of the products is a high realizable value. So, uh, it's a good question, must be ready on that. So, give me some time, I'll come back to you on this. Sure, sure. Uh, just to understand, out of this 300,000, last question, 300,000 metric tons, what would be the utilization levels currently we are at? We, during the season time, we run three shifts. Almost 20 hours per day. Okay, okay. So let me put it the other way around. Uh, mm -hmm. From a uh, crushing angle, what would be the maximum, what would be the utilization levels like we did? Some 30, 000, 27 to 30,000 uh, sales tonnage for this particular quarter. What would the maximum tonnage we can do? In a quarter this? or in a day? In a year. In a year, in a year uh, it depends. This is a seasonal industry, you know. If based on the capacity, if throughout the year, raw material available, we can crash up to, say, 15 lakh metric ton. But other than mango, there is no uh, other fruit available like mango in a large way. So that's why you have to restrict ourselves on selection only. Oh. So, so the whole idea of us actually diversifying into a few other fruits and vegetables was to say, as to how do we optimally utilize our existing capacities. So during the non-mango season to absorb our fixed overage is why we actually got into the other products as such. So uh, it's... Totally dependent on the fruit availability or the vegetable availability during a particular season, and uh, the capacities are extremely tough to actually uh, quantify as such. Uh, but having said that, it's on a dump per hour basis is what we actually, uh, I mean, the capacities are defined, which might not be of too much of use to you. Okay. 
Uh, that is interesting so what i understand is your production is seasonal but uh, the the revenue recognition isn't because you have you can store the material and sell uh, as per the demand so of the year is not as per the demand basically during the season itself there are contracts which are fixed which are uh, 12 to 15 months long as such and there are uh, the larger brands uh, as we sell to most of the fortune 500 companies around the world uh, there are no cases wherein we see fallback of uh, the promised order as such thank you sir that is very helpful thank you thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question comes on the line of rashmik oza from 9 days equi research please go ahead thanks for the follow up sir uh, i wanted to understand on some spices you know we had some setback because of pesticides in the exports uh, one going forward you know what is the trajectory or uh, we should look at in terms of business coming from kosum spices for this fiscal year and maybe next 2 to 3 years but to mitigate this risk factor in a, in the export market what we are doing is we are expanding our export business to other countries also like uh, kusum so far majorly an export only in oman market so oman has having lot of restriction on the pesticide whereas the other uh, parts of the world is not so rest- so, uh, so strict on this pesticide so we are expanding our business moreover we are expanding our business in the local domestic market also so uh, we see feel that in next 3 years time uh, kusum can be around uh, 3x or 4x that is the plans we are having if you could quantify in terms of uh, revenue side the contribution that can come from kusum in the next 3 years uh, it should be around Uh, in three years total, or you are talking about in the third year? What should be the contribution? Ah, third year. In third year, no. Yeah. So it should be around uh, one six. Uh, the, our first target is to actually make Kusum a hundred crore brand. That's the first target that we have internally. Whether it gets achieved in the second year or third year or fourth year is something that we are trying to plan as of now. So we wouldn't want to give you any commitments which you can actually hold me against. That, that is fair. That is fair. And the last question is, uh, if you can just you know quantify how much does Coke uh, and uh, individually Coke and Pepsi account for the total revenue on an annual basis, or maybe in FY24? Uh, had a share of around 40 to 42 percent of our total revenues, and uh, Pepsi had around a share of around 8 to 10 percent approximately. 8 to 10 percent. Okay. And beyond these two, who are the next two, three large customers of the company? There are guys globally, brands glo- globally like Boyron, Simrise, and a few others. Uh, Dollar, all these guys contribute to our uh, total. So top ten contribute to around 60 to 65 percent of our total revenue. Okay, that is helpful. Thank, thanks, Satan. Yeah. Thank you. A reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question comes on the line of Avinash Nahata from Parami Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so I have two questions. Number one. What is the uh, since we are coming to the end of the season currently? So, what is our average procurement price of the mango crop versus the last year? While you have mentioned uh, Tota Puri is half, Malfenzo is 20%, 18% higher. On a ballpark, what is our procurement price uh, 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 as compared to the last year? Uh, Alfonso would be procurement yeah. will be around overall. Overall, Malaysia average. Malaysia overall. overall. Overall, overall, yes. we may not be able to tell you when just like that. It depends on uh, uh, quantity. It has to be a weighted average. That weighted average data may not be available in the other as of now. So while I, uh, we do not want the exact number, but uh, you still would have a hang of it since uh, the procurement for the current year is also complete. But on a no, ballpark basis, it's continuing. It's, uh, I think it will be another few days, maybe three, four days still. 
Uh, Abhinash, uh, just to add to what you just said, uh, the point is it doesn't make sense for us to even look at the data that way, basically because what we target is gross margin per product, right? So we never look at uh, what is the weighted average of all the uh, I mean, procurement that we have done. We price our products individually depending upon what the procurement price of a particular product is and then we uh, uh, price it. And having said that, it is slightly a sensitive data for us to actually share on a con call basically because we don't want our competitors or our customers to know that. No, so while I agree that uh, it's a uh, gross margin per kg per ton basis, but what it impacts is basically stock and our investment into the stock. So it gives us, uh, as an investor, it gives us a sense whether we are higher by 20% or lower by 20%. Any which way? I don't uh, understand what you said. Can you please repeat? I'm saying our uh, procurement price will determine how much investment is going into the stock for the next 15 months. Correct. Our stock and trade. So Correct. that was the idea of asking not for the PNL profitability, uh, not for, at a gross margin level. Right. So, I mean, uh, since the raw material prices are lower this year, obviously our uh, investment would be lower. But having said that, our volumes have gone up. We should actually increase the total inventory levels as such. So, uh, maybe not a like to like thing for you to actually compute that. But having said that, it will also help us create positive operating cash flows. No, I got it. I got it that uh, volume is up and the price is low. What I'm not getting is magnitude. So uh, we might not be able to give you that standard answer. Okay, fair enough. Now my second question is, like uh, the last year procurement which happened from March uh, 22 to August 22, uh, it is effectively getting consumed till December 13. Ballpark next 15 months. Uh, so whatever our procurement price, this is a question around pricing. So whatever is our procurement price, uh, the ag average procurement price from uh, while you might have uh, different uh, covenants with different customers uh, based on offtake or whatever. But uh, uh, my question is, whatever we have procured in the last year, will the pricing stay for the next 15 months for that entire procurement? Yes, the prices are fixed as per inventory season. So uh, whatever I crush this season, the prices are going to be fixed for that particular inventory over the uh, demand which is actually committed. So uh, so there uh, uh, from a B2B business, there will not be any lag, koi quarter mein lag nahi hoga. Ki, uh, some quarter the, uh, like, uh, 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 just to take an example, let's say this year the procurement price is low. So the cops which we are building in right now are at a lower price and what we are realizing is based on uh, what we have agreed with the customer for the last year produced. So that lag will not be there, you are saying? Correct. It depends upon which inventory we are supplying to that particular investor. So, uh, sorry, to the customer as such. Yeah, so uh, that is correct. So on a FIFO basis, whatever inventory is getting consumed and supplied, so it will depend on that. Correct. It's a complete path through for us. So you are saying there will be no lag in terms of where the profit is compressed in some quarter and it gets expanded in some quarter? So uh, it depends upon the inventory pricing, right, of a particular uh, year's inventory. So, uh, I mean, whenever that particular year's inventory is consumed, the prices will differ, the margins will differ. It's about the commitment and the uh, production that we have done. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So we'll take one last question because we are closing in on uh, 6.30, so... Sure. Yes, the final question comes from the line of Neeraj, an individual investor. Please go ahead. So I wanted to once again confirm the uh, crushing uh, part is 40% higher than last year and volume guidance is 15 to 20% uh, sales growth spike this year. So, uh, crashing is 40% higher, that is for sure. Sales growth, as I told you, as in it depends upon the call off. Uh, I mean, there is no case wherein uh, a committed demand is actually not taken up by any of the uh, larger players as such. So, we will not be able to exactly quantify on the sales growth, even though we are more positive, but then. Uh, the crushing has happened and we have to sell that and it's based on the orders that we have received. 
Okay. So demand, uh, demand expectation or the demand figure that you've got is more than 20%, right? Correct, correct. That's right. Okay. Thank you. And around 40% because of which we have actually crushed 40%. On a more generic way, the consumption story in India is growing at a very fast pace. So uh, we should be able to take advantage of it. Right. So we can expect even 30, 40 percent in blue sky scenario for the year. Sorry. On a blue sky scenario, we can even expect 30 percent to 40 percent sales growth or volume growth. Call off happens, but it depends upon the call off. Okay. Right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Due to time constraints, this was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Anand Krishnan, the CFO, for closing comments. Thank you, Kelvin. I want to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude to all the investors for their unwavering support and trust in our organization. I hope we have been able to answer most of your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to write to us. Thank you once again. On behalf of Foods in Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.